I'm Ilse Crawford, and this is a series of three Good Design Masterclasses sponsored by Braun to mark their 100th anniversary. This episode looks at built to last. What are the values behind built to last as a principle? Obviously, it's about longevity and durability, but it must be consequent. It's also about an authentic love for things rather than designing for obsolescence. It's about designing things we love more. One of the things that people often say when talking about built to last is that, you know, we should design in a timeless, lasting way. That is actually surprisingly difficult to do because, paradoxically, most lasting design is actually outside of its time or ahead of its time. And the collaboration between the Ulm School, which was the most progressive design school of its time, and Brown is a classic example of this. They developed an analytic approach that focused on use, and from this came a design methodology which informed Brown's product range for decades. This T3 radio was the result of a collaboration between Dieter Brahms at Brown and the Ulm School. And here you have it, you know, it's stripped down it's as neutral as it's possible to be. It's uncompromising. Reduced to the absolute minimum and purpose-driven. So the only bit that moves is this dial, which makes it super intuitive. And these are the qualities that have kept it relevant for decades and admired by so many, even if, you know, analog has been superseded by technology. Built to last is often assumed to be about being robust and indestructible, but actually the opposite is often true. It's the things that are fragile and beautiful that inspire care, and therefore they last. One good example of that, I think, is this Akari light, which was one of a series that was designed by the Japanese-American sculptor Isamu Noguchi in 1951. He approached a factory, a zeki, in Japan. And this factory had been making historic paper lanterns since the late 19th century. So he worked with the craftsmen who'd been making these lights in the traditional way for so long. They used these traditional historic techniques, so using washi paper, which is made from mulberry tree bark, and pasting that over bamboo and then stretching that over moulds, which he carved himself, to develop a new kind of lantern for an electric bulb. So table lamps, floor lamps, ceiling lamps. And they were a huge success. And in fact, they are still made at the same factory today, many years later. And they're still made using those old techniques, which means that those historic skills have still been preserved. And there's just something so warm and delicate about the lanterns that I think enthralls us still, you know, they're still adored. And as a studio, we use them in projects quite a lot. Um, recently, for example, we used them in a family mental health centre where typically, you know, you would expect things might need to be a bit more robust. But they bring this amazing warm, glow to the space that really takes the edge off the experience. And they're still there and still perfectly intact. I mean, as we all know, plastics and their durability 
is a real problem. But that can be harnessed and upgraded. And this table is an interesting example of that. Dirk van der Kooy, the maker and designer, has used recycled plastics to make furniture, which is far more appealing than the idea of recycled waste might suggest. And he does that with all manner of plastic waste. I mean, CD cases, garden furniture, children's toys, and they're all processed together and upgraded to make a really beautiful material and to make pieces that actually deserve to last. His process involves using a really, really big press. So the plastics are all um, mashed up and put into this press to make these incredibly heavy, durable bits of furniture. I believe this one weighs around 50 kilograms. One of the deliberate side effects of this process is that, of course, all of these different materials, CD cases, toys, refrigerators even, have a history. And van der Kooy makes no effort to hide that. In fact, he sees that as really part of its life story. So when you look more closely at this table, you'll see, in this case, the sort of stickers from the old CD cases. You'll see traces of the materials that were used to create this. Young designers are already making decisions, not in terms of the single product, but in the context of the wider system. They're asking questions about where it's from, how it's made, where it's going. The three principles of brown design, simple, useful, built to last, will be increasingly important for making a better future. But these need to be seen in terms of the wider context. Currently, 85% of our clothing ends up in landfill. This bale is made up of a collection of discarded clothing. And now it's on its way to Africa, South America, Eastern Europe, where it has a huge impact on the local textiles industry. Appropriate design and circularity is the future. Here is a positive example of that. It's a bra by an Australian company called The Very Good Bra. And it's designed to be entirely compostable. In a wormery, it disappears in eight weeks. We need to be thinking more about the three principles of brown design, and we need to be thinking more about sustainable systems. Thank you for joining, and I hope it's given you food for thought.